finally over. I am released from my shackles as I can finally end my hate watching of True Detective. But boy, if I got a doozy of a plot hole for you folks, let's get into it. So that's right, Night Country is over. We made it. We got through all six episodes. And I am certainly convinced that this was a reskin of another project where they just randomly put in things that mildly resembled true detective things uh, as part of their reshoots or whatever they had to do for the show. But clearly, this was not the original intention. And I can prove it. But before we get there, I'm going to run through a bit of a... We're going to walk through the plot a little bit just to get everybody on the same page. Obviously, spoilers, because we finally know who did everything. And guess what, folks? It weren't any ghosties. So let's take a look as other people are watching this. Forbes. Forbes hates it. (laughs) True Detective, a truly embarrassing season finale. And as this guy goes through, Eric Kane, through what he hated about it, I will put my things on top of it. He claims that it was making him yell at his TV screen more than once in utter disbelief. Now, what I don't get is he talks a little bit about a show, a show or movie, I guess, called Wind River, which they complete, which he claims they ripped off. I don't know, I don't know anything about that, so I can't. I can't discuss that, but what he's saying is that he's shocked that Prestige Television, a place like HBO that releases Succession, Game of Thrones, True Detective, and White Lotus, would name something or would release something this truly terrible on TV. So they're in, they're in super duper duper hurry. They must solve this case. Something I mentioned in my previous review there's an artificial ticking time clock that's been inserted into the show. The girl's case that they're trying to solve is already dead. She's been dead for six years, so there's no reason to to do anything with that. Um, so they have to hurry out in the middle of a blizzard to find a guy who's already been hiding for like two weeks or so. It it doesn't make it, there's no reason for it, but but they're going out there because they have to find some ice caves that they are truly ill prepared to go into. They have no proper equipment. They have nothing, just their police know-how as they go to explore uncharted caves that they don't know anything about it. And shockingly enough, uh, and the guy that they were going to take, who was going to take them through them, he's dead. So they can do it themselves. No big deal. Now, I will say, I thought the set piece of the ice caves was really beautiful. I thought they did a really fantastic job. Kudos to the set designers. You guys, you guys did it. You nailed it. That's a great one. So they go through the caves and Navarro magically knows where to go. Perfectly fine. Uh, and they they find, you know, they're going through miles or, you know, it's literally only a couple minutes and they clearly went through the same set twice. So I think it must have been a smaller Smaller set, smaller soundstage, and they, you know, look, they did a fantastic job, but there's only so much footage you can get through there. So they run into Raymond Clark. Shocker. And guess what? He's not wearing, like, a shirt or something. Uh, There are parts where he's not, it doesn't make a lot of sense because he doesn't have clothes on, and then he does, but then he doesn't. So we'll come back to that because I noticed something at that point. We'll come back to that. So they they pursue him and they come into a super fancy science room, but above them is a a swirly design of some sort of giant snake or something. <laughs> like it doesn't we will never speak of it ever again. That will never be mentioned, not one more time. And they magically find you know they're looking at all this equipment, and I would think no one would have any idea what any of it was. They just so happen to have a drill bit that that Danvers sees that is, you know, that star-shaped drill bit that she's like, yep, they 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 done did it. Know what happened now? We solved the case of the six-year-old murder. Awesome, guys. You are great cops. So then they they catch him and they tie him up, you know, it's 
pretty pretty silly. It's funny because um, Danvers has a gun and she's stuck in a room full of glass. And I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't you just shoot out of the glass? I mean, I don't think it's bulletproof. I mean, you could at least find out if it's bulletproof. I mean, maybe she was afraid that it would like bounce around the room and hit her. I don't know. Instead, she literally ripped a giant pole off of the wall and broke it open, you know, because that's something that she was more, that was more reasonable than her shooting her gun. Perfect. Perfect. Let's keep going. Then, instead of questioning the man, they tie him up and torture him with the screams of his girlfriend, and we have no idea if he killed her. We have zero idea how he got... So, a lot of people were, in my previous video, giving me a hard time about how the phone got anywhere. So, you're telling me this man who was hiding out in this this super secret bunker that is underneath... um you know, Salal Station, that she can just magically, he can, he can magically walk back to his trailer and hide the phone there, you know, which is evidence or something, when he had a super secret bunker to leave it in, he just brought it back to their trailer because, you know, that's a good place to hide it. And, and it's one of those coincidences and contrived plot devices that they couldn't keep track of because I'm getting to my plot hole. I'm I'm going to tell it to you and you're going to be like, "Wow. This is why they artificially inserted this whole like Inuit and uh this the whole thing together." So you find out from the guy that not only are they polluting, they're they're not even just covering up for the pollution of the mine. They're super covering it up because they want more pollution because you know the thing, they're digging in the dirt and they're going to find a super se- they unlocked whatever the super secret thing was and the super secret thing works, but we'll never speak about it again. No one will ever mention the super secret thing that they had. They'll never mention what, what they were doing. They'll never mention, you know, what it cures, what the microbe does. None of it. That, that was just secondary. Not, not don't ask questions, just keep consuming product. So anyway, he's been properly tortured and, you know, they're going to kill him, but then it, this is really bad editing, I thought, at this particular scene where it just doesn't, whatever. It's just, they don't kill him, but they do kill him, you know, and he literally says the thing. And I'm just like, are you, are you freaking kidding me? Clark goes, time is a flat circle, just like True Detective. It's as if someone watched True Detective season one was like, oh my God, can we throw a couple random things in here? And it'll make perfect sense as to why. It will just connect it. I promise it all connects. So anyway, they're freezing to death. And uh, Navarro walks off because, you know, that's what they like to do out there. And then uh, Danvers falls on the ice because she sees her kid or some nonsense. And then, of course, Navarro was going to pull her out because, you know, she's capable and, you know, all of that was super believable that she wouldn't just die right then and there. Zero stakes in any of this. Um, just think about it. Everyone who died was already dead by the time we saw this. Who even wrote, we are all dead? And <laughs> there's actually two plot holes. So anyway, they're just going to cover it up. Everybody's going to cover everything up. What we find out is that the cleaning ladies figured out that uh, that they killed, that the scientists clearly killed. They came to the same conclusion that the cops came off of without questioning anybody that they were all guilty of killing Annie, Annie Kay, all of them to die. Well, in their mind, they weren't killing them, they were just stripping them and making them walk off into the ice. And then if the supernatural boogeyman wanted to take them, then sure, whatever, man. Because if they could have came back and gotten their clothes and they would have lived, right. <laughs> That's the other thing, as this guy says. I guess the vet was just wrong and the dudes really did die by freezing to death. What's with all like their eyes getting burned and them biting themselves or biting each other. Like, what? That's not how people die in hypothermia, apparently. So, whatever, man. 
but I want to, I just, I, it's so stupid. Yeah, why is he screaming she's awake? All that stuff. So here's what I want to know. If the cleaning ladies, if that guy knew, if, if Clark knew that the cleaning ladies were the ones who abducted all the guys, why didn't he just tell Danvers and Navarro? Now, let's say he didn't, and he really genuinely thought Annie came back as a ghost and, and was kidnapping them. We'll go with that. If the cleaning ladies knew there was a guy down there hiding, why didn't they come back and get him? They just left him there so that he could potentially rat all of them out? There's like 20 of them, and they're all like, eh, who cares? No big deal, right? So, and then Navarro just quits. <laughs> And she becomes a, uh, you know, she's like the Lone Ranger going out avenging women who were mistreated. That's that's what happens. She's no longer a detective. She clearly changes her name into her native name and just disappears and doesn't care. And she gets away. She gets away Scott clean. She's a murderer. Um Everyone's a murderer, and they just hide all of it. Nobody bothered to investigate. Nobody cares. It just not none of it matters. So you got my my one plot hole, which is if the cleaning ladies knew that there was an extra guy because they knew how many guys there were, why didn't they come back and get that guy? Why did the polar bear? What, what was the polar bear? Nothing. Just the stuffed animal. I, whatever. Don't care. Moving on with my life. Here's the final plot hole, and I had to go back and double check this one, right? So, in the premiere, some of the, the evidence, this circumstantial connective evidence, is that Danvers had discovered that Clark had been photographed what appears to be a pink parka that belonged to Annie Kay. And that's how they connected Annie Kay. And they make a big deal out of calling a tattoo artist to get some information because he had a spiral tattoo on his chest that matched the design and the tattoo that was on one of the scientists' forehead and a tattoo on Annie Kay's back. Okay? So when they saw him in the ice place with no clothes on, or at least just no shirt on or whatever, he did not have a spiral tattoo on his chest. So somebody clearly forgot that they wrote this into the script. And that's because it was done as a reshoot because they added all this spiral nonsense just to be red herrings for you so you guys could think it was True Detective when in reality, it's a completely different show that was clear, well, not clearly, but allegedly ripped off from this Wind River thing that I've never seen. So you guys be the judge. If you're going to come at me, come at me with some hard evidence that this was a good show. Tell me you weren't disappointed in it unless you just like the idea of strong women's doing strong women's thing. Now, I'm not opposed to the women coming in and, and, and taking those men. Why was this guy having crazy seizures that sure look like ghost things? Why is Navarro seeing ghosts? What happened to Navarro when she was sitting in front of the uh, the Christmas tree? Is that where the bo little where Danvers' little kid says, "I see you"? Like who? Ca I don't care if he sees her. At all of a sudden, she's not a vile human being because of what? None of it makes sense. D just I just don't care. <laughs> it's just bad, embarrassing. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. That's what I think. Let me know if I miss something because my loud, this is a bad show. I'm glad it's over with. I hope the ratings are so terrible that they never make another one. I think this puts a nail in the coffin for True Detective. We can, you know, just talk about that first season that was really nice and had some really cool things going on. And then the rest of this, it's amazing too, because if we tie it all together in a nice little bow, Nick Pizzolatto was accused of being a plagiarist. And here we now have the Issa, whatever her name is, the showrunner, being a plagiarist as well as she stole the plot of another show. Congratulations, HBO and True Detective. You guys love stealing things. So you didn't steal my heart, but what you can do is like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. It allows me to continue doing what I do here today, which is... I don't just hate things, but in this particular circumstance, I'm pointing out things that you might love or not love and tell you why they're terrible and ridicule them. So if you enjoy that type of thing, come join me. And in the meantime, you can also catch our comedy podcast, which is 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights. It's a lot of fun. You could join the channel, 
You can uh, do some super chat things, all that great stuff. We do appreciate you. Thank you for listening to me. In the meantime, I am on to the next one.